What's up guys? Driving back in the newly acquired coupe and um, sorry the video started out this way. It was pouring down rain when I picked the car up uh, but the deal did go through. There's a bunch of goodies sitting here in the back seat. I'm on my way home. I'll be there soon and I'll be able to reveal to you guys what I picked up this time. So be sure to stick around because you're not going to want to miss this one. There's going to be a lot of uh, put back and changes happening to this one. All right, guys, here we are back at the shop. You can see the car sitting here behind me and it's a much nicer day out today. So I figured I would show you guys firsthand this new acquisition I got, a 1988 LX Notch, 93,000 original kilometers on it with a lot of modifications and questionable ones as mentioned before. So you can see the car has been fully repainted. It's got a Dutch kit on it. It's got some 18 inch SC saline rep wheels. And um, we're gonna go over some of these mods that are done to the car, but you can kind of get a feel and a look for it because you're probably like, why is it so low? How is it so low? Well, it is sitting on a Ride Tech airbag system. So it is the air spring set up where the bags go in place of your regular coil springs. It does have the Fox shocks in the rear. I'm not 100% sure which struts are running in the car. I haven't even had it up on the hoist yet. All I can say, the car is absolutely rust free. And I'm not a big guy for blue Fox bodies or blue cars in general, but I definitely don't mind having them. When the sun hits this car, it looks phenomenal. So this is a beautiful looking car and a really nice example. So this car actually came up for sale in the Toronto area, oh, probably a month and a half ago. And I missed out on it. I tried to buy it. A couple weeks go by and I get a text message from a guy that I've been talking to about another build. And he asked me if I would be interested in a coupe and he sends me a picture of the car. So I asked him why he didn't want it. And while it didn't tick all of the boxes that he was hoping for, in long story short, I'm gonna be building him a car. It's not gonna be this one. Uh, we made a deal for this and I will reveal what the build and which car is gonna be for him in another video. But until then, let's take a closer look at this thing. So let's talk about some of the bad stuff on the car first. Now, air ride is not a bad thing to me, so that is on the good list and um, the detch kit isn't a bad thing either the detch kit actually whoever installed it they did mold it in but they did a really nice job my understanding was the car was actually built back in the early 2000s so the car actually shows amazingly well for something that was done pretty much 20 years ago now in terms of some of these questionable mods um, these headlights so i don't know if those are smoke lights that they tried to tint with some yellow or they just concocted something or maybe it's plasti dip i have no idea what's going on there or what it is but um these lights gotta go so got a nice set of new lights that can go in here I'm not gonna waste any time guys i'm literally gonna be doing this as soon as we uh when i get done or get through with this rundown of the car this hood despite the carbon fiber work actually being really nice and the fitment is actually really nice um this is not for me. Um, if it were a stock style hood where it didn't have like this lizard back in the center, um, I'd maybe be more okay with it. I was actually thinking that if it was a stock style hood, what I'd do is actually mix some blue paint into some clear coat and clear coat on top of this and give it a blue tinge, but you could still see the carbon. Uh, but in this case, it's not happening. So the hood's going to get swapped for a stock hood and I'll paint it to match the rest of the car wiper cowl again a for effort but no um stock one's gonna go back on there 50 emblem placement that drives me nuts that needs to come down we'll see how those emblems are stuck on they were probably stuck on 20 years ago so it might be a battle and i really don't want to upset the paint so we'll see we'll cross that bridge when we get there um saline sc wheels 18 inch um, they look great. Uh, treads good on all the tires. 
I think it's a 235, 235.40, 265.35. You know, with the air, you need to have some uh, forgiving space and movement to allow the car to sit down so low. Quarter windows, well, that's not a bad mod, but uh, these need to get freshened up. So I'm going to definitely be doing that. <laughs> and I'm laughing because you guys are probably laughing that you're seeing this. LED Euro tail lights. Like I am not even gonna, like these. I think I'm going to run them over with something like maybe I'll run them over with this amazing 75 Mercury Grand Marquis I just picked up. That thing is cherry. 31,000 original miles on it. Green on green. Richard Rawlings, you would love that thing. That pretty much goes for all of the questionable outside mods. One thing that's kind of cool is um, this splitter that was done. It's actually rubber, so it's actually got a lot of give and movement, which is really good when you're riding low because it's not going to grab and catch and um, bend stuff. So I'm not sure what this is. I'm going to investigate that a little bit more closely. Um, but that's actually um, a super cool touch. So um, that is a neat, that's a plus in my opinion. Let's move on to the interior here. You can tell the car's crisp, right? Like that is, that's the test when you know you got a nice crisp low mileage car. So door panels, everything looks super clean. Get rid of the ding here. We even have the little caps for the screws here in the door panels. This is a zero option car. Um, so no AC, no power windows, no power mirrors, no crews, none of that stuff. So um, you've probably noticed a trend with a lot of the cars that I pick up here in Canada. A lot of them don't have options. We got Corbo seats. Um, I can't say that these are the most comfortable seats I've ever ridden in. I know they're kind of more of an affordable option. Um, they look good. They feel okay, but nothing compared to a Recaro. So um, I don't know, this is, a, this is a plus, I would say. Um, steering wheel, not a huge fan of, but um, you know, maybe if it was like a nice Momo wheel or one of the newer Ford racings, but you know, it's okay. Um, gauges galore. Got the um, Christmas tree style air fuel ratio gauge here and a boost gauge. So clearly the car was boosted at one point in its life. Um, it is definitely not boosted anymore. So these are kind of useless. So this guy will come out. Um, <laughs> the lovely monster tack. And then you got your, um, your vent replacement gauge pod there, which I guess if the car doesn't have AC, then you really don't care if you're not getting any um, air getting blown through there. Um, dead gauges as a result so they've plugged in sensors for water and oil and uh, killed the gauges in the cluster so we'll definitely be removing that setup hooking up our cluster gauges again uh, but you can see right here guys there is a zero in the front of those odometer numbers so otherwise things are pretty clean in here um, new lights new uh, cowl piece so we've already got some things here to uh, start putting this car um, back to where it should be. We'll go into the trunk here. I'll show you guys the setup here. The, uh, the air raid setup is actually quite nice. It's actually got twin Vire um, pumps and um, a nice polished air tank. And the air management, I'm actually not 100% sure what the kit is. Um, there's nothing on the controller, but it is 100% automated. It has its ride settings and obviously when you're aired out. So this is the aired out setting right here. So go ahead, start the car up for you guys. Actually, I take that back. We'll pop the hood first, then I'll start things up. All right, the Smurf Blue Engine Bay. So um, some goods and some bads in here. Um, the goods are, there's some goodies underneath the hood. I need to double check the list of mods again. I know the motor was rebuilt. I don't know what the displacement was. Um, does have to, aftermarket heads. It's got a cam, it's got the intakes. Uh, mass air converted as the car is an 88. So that as well as the injectors um, have all been upgraded. 
um, you know, MSD wires. This whole mixing blue with red thing doesn't work for me, uh, but it is what it is. Um, painted the cold air intake, and um, you know, whoever did this, it's it a fairly clean job. It's not horrible. Just I definitely would have tried to get some, I guess, blue plug wires or black plug wires, um, at least. But it's pretty clean in here. Um, the engine bay, obviously, they had painted all black. I'm not sure what the original color of the car was. Um, it could very well have been a black car. But, um, yeah, they even have an oil separator in the back there. Just kind of an interesting setup. Got some SVE coolant hoses. You know what? To be honest with you, I got a set of brand new Continental Blue hoses. Maybe they should go on this car because um, I don't know what other car that I have that they would suit. So this might be a, a good candidate. Uh, I drove this car probably about 100 miles home uh, yesterday. No problems. Drove it at the ride height. Um, the only thing that I noticed is that the temperature did creep up once I got into town into traffic. And it was just the uh, thermostat, uh, the potentiometer there. So I cranked that down. Fans came on sooner and haven't had an issue with the cooling ever since. Now, with that said, check out this water pump. So some kind of sealant work going on here. So I'm probably going to pull off that water pump, you know, get a new gasket, get that cleaned up. And, um, you know, just kind of detail up the rest of the engine bay. All right, so what I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to start the car up and then you'll see it automatically self levels itself to its ride height. So we get that started up. You'll be able to see that, be able to hear it, all those things. So I got to say the air management on this car is pretty cool. Um, unlike my silver car, it's all analog. So you're sitting there with switches, looking at gauges, trying to set everything the way that you want it yourself versus this one. It already knows the pressures that are set to it. So it's running at about 73 pounds of air in the front bags. And I think it's about 32 pounds in the rear. And one thing that you'll notice is that the car actually has to go up higher and then pressurize down in order to reach those uh, optimum ride heights. Same thing happens with my silver car. If you just bump it up to 70 and you start trying to drive away, it's instantly gonna drop back down to probably around 50. So you need to go over, you need to bring it up to like 100 pounds and then drop some of the air out of them to get it to the ride height that you want. So you can hear in the back here, nice little idle. It's running long tube headers, um, off-road, mid pipe and I don't know what mufflers are here. The car is actually surprisingly pretty quiet for something with long tubes and an off-road on it. So I don't know, I guess it's okay. Maybe the mufflers need to get changed, but uh, yeah, nice little idle. Just, I hate looking at those taillights. I'm sure you guys do as well, but here, give a listen. So there you have it guys, the 1988 Blue Detch Notch. Um, it's kind of came out of nowhere. You gotta pick them up when you can. Pretty nice example. Depends what you're into. If you're following my channel, then you probably dig this car. If you're new to my channel, then you might have some other questions, but hey, that's all right. Um, this thing is so close to fitting what I would say is an infamous personalized build and i'm going to do those few little transformational things and just get the car looking and sounding right and um kind of found a daily driver replacement right so the 90 gt is gone i was hustling trying to get the white 91 ready and on the road but now they're actually calling for potentially snow tomorrow which is really hard to believe when i'm outside in a t-shirt right now but uh, needless to say got this car i can drive it around enjoy it and uh man i miss having something on air ride so for any of you guys that are wondering what is the quality of air ride like or how does it feel 
it's actually one of the smoothest, nicest rides um, that you can get in a Fox body in all reality. Like I'm not saying that it's meant for you guys that want to be drag racing or you're trying to put a bunch of power down to the ground. Might not be the best option for you, but if you're driving around on the street and you want a nice low stance, um, you cannot beat it in my opinion. Um, it's just nice to have the flexibility, especially if you're really low and you got some bumps that you need to go over or some driveways that you need to enter and clear, you have the flexibility to bump it up. So I'm pro air ride for sure. I do like to have static drops as well. The white 91, that's gonna be a coil over and a static ride, but sometimes you end up paying for that. You hit something in the road, might crack, might chip paint, scrape stuff. You know, like there's some nasty train tracks down there. The 90 GT, I had to slow down to a crawl uh, to be able to go over them. This car, I can I can shoot right over them, no problem. So there you have it. You can see that this is the actual ride height where the car would, uh, this is how it sits when you're driving. Um, you know, again, I drove it 100 miles yesterday, highway around town, everything. I didn't run into one issue. So it's set up pretty nice. It's, uh, it's a nice car and uh, we'll see what happens. So stay tuned. I'm gonna dig into this thing right now. I'm gonna start changing out these headlights. I'm gonna change out those taillights get the look changed and then I can do like a nice little walk around video and give a reveal instead of doing it with all this ugliness on here. So um, there you have it guys. Let me get swapping some parts out. They even left the screw in there. How convenient. Never over tighten these guys. It's like everyone's biggest mistake. This piece is fragile enough as it is. So you got to treat it with care. That already looks a million times better right there. Um, I will scotch pad down those wiper arms and get them cleaned up and painted. I usually don't even run wiper arms. Usually they sit in the trunk and only come out in case of rain. I think, uh, I think we need to do these tail lights next. See, there's uh, some interesting wiring here. There is literally a ground spot right here. What do they do? They take wires and they touch them to there. Unreal. Anyways, get that sorted out right now. Please guys, don't be lazy when it comes to wiring. Like. This is so easy. Like this probably will take less time than whatever it is that they tried to do. There we go, proper ground. That wasn't so hard, was it? So it does look like that the car's original color is black, which is always a nice color. If you're gonna do a repaint, or a, sorry, if you guys are gonna do a color change on a car, Painting a black car is good for two reasons. First reason might piss some people off, but the first reason is there's enough black Fox bodies out there anyways. Um, but again, no offense, like black notches are nice. You can see how many of them I've owned in the past year. Um, and they're great for resale. Now, going back to uh, another good reason why a black car is good um, to do a color change on is because things like the engine bay, um, you know, stuff like this, it doesn't look bad when it's black underneath. Like if this car was originally red, you had a red engine bay where you pulled off this, you know, trim and everything and you saw red under here, it'd be pretty gross. So black is good for those reasons. Yep, I just threw that tail light. Don't worry, we'll get some uh, we'll get some more video of what we'll do with those. So these are actually um, Daniel Carpenter. So if you guys don't know who Daniel Carpenter is, he is probably one of the best aftermarket box body part suppliers out there. So if you guys are looking for parts and you want some quality stuff, um, Daniel Carpenter is uh, 
is honestly your best bet. So keep that in mind if you guys are looking for anything. Make sure your gaskets are mounted on well. And uh, oh man, I can I can feel the difference. So I'm using the original nuts just because they have a fatter washer and they actually have a little bit of like a weather strip on the backside um, just to keep any moisture. Oh my God, night and day difference. I guess if you really wanted to, you could potentially tint the, um, you go for a tinted or a smoke look back here, but this just looks so much fresher. Uh, I do need to find some bulbs though, because the um, LED lights actually had a, because uh, they're LEDs, so these plug into the uh, factory harness. So again, oh look, it broke. So before I got sidetracked with that horrible LED tail light, one thing to keep in mind is you do need to align these. So be sure that when you're installing them, because there is some movement in the holes, make sure you got them straight so that, you know, your gaps with the bumper and, you know, lines with the trunk lid and everything line up straight. Because if you just put them in, they can go in a little crooked side to side. So keep that in mind when you're installing these. And uh, I'm going to get the other side done real quick and we'll take a look at the final result. There we are guys, looks a million times better. So fresh and crisp back here, but let's move on to the headlights, get those swapped out. night and day difference hands down man put what maybe an hour's time into this new headlights new tail lights got the wiper cowling put back to stock and the car looks a million times better already you can almost funny enough you can almost tolerate the carbon fiber hood I'm not saying it's good i'm saying you can almost tolerate it some so brand new headlights six piece kit you know change the weather strip around the headlights made sure everything was aligned up sitting all good in there wiper cowl super straightforward again guys don't over torque these down be gentle with them um, the wiper sprayer was actually just sitting in there the screw was still attached so i just screwed that on super easy fix and look at how bright and crisp those taillights are those quarter window moldings are just <laughs> probably the worst looking part of the car right now. So you're going to have to get those cleaned up. Once that trim is done though, because the rest of the trim on the car is actually really nice. So once I can do a little bit of a little restoration on here, they're not horrible. So it shouldn't be too hard to get these looking good again. And um, that's it guys. 1988 Blue Coupe, Dutch kit, Air Ride. 18 inch SC rep wheels, little built motor, heads cam intake. So um, there you have it. <laughs>